Today we will be studying another type of coordinate system known as the cylindrical coordinate system. Let us see what it is. So first uh, we have a usual coordinate system okay, in three dimensions. So this is x, this is y, this is z. You can check right hand rule. And now we will develop another coordinate system using using this one. How do we go about it? Well, first, what do we do? Pick a point. Uh, let's 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 say this point, and measure how much it is above this x y plane. So, if this is the x y plane, this entire uh, plane x y how much you are above this plane all right this height and we call it this uh, call it z okay so z doesn't change in this coordinate system it's cylindrical as well as cartesian z doesn't change all right but this point uh, if it's the only let's let me, call, let me call this constraint the only constraint on this point is that it is at a height z above x y a plane you know then it can be in, in another plane which is located above x uh, x y plane at a distance z so we still need a bit more information so that we can locate this point precisely all right the uh, next uh, step is or the next measurement is this one how far it uh, how far away it is from z axis okay we call this s so we have fixed our z if we have fixed our s now our point can be anywhere on this plane and on this circle okay this is at a distance as this is distance as this is also as this is also as so us so we still have have not specified our uh, completely specified or uniquely specified our point how do we go about this so we just need to locate one point on this circle all right well we project s okay project s onto the xy plane so this is something it will look like okay and we measure how much angle does it make with the x axis and we call this phi so once your phi is determined okay so once your phi is determined you can easily locate a point your point is specified on this circle that's what phi gives us so using our s phi and z we have completely specified a location of this point now how do we write this we write it as, write it as s phi z in our uh, cartesian co coordinates we, we would have written it as x y z right so that's how we write it in a cylindrical coordinates this is the convention now what are, what are the unit vectors in s z and phi z direction well let's see s is uh, increasing from s how did we uh, define our s starting from the z axis and go going outwards so if this is how s is increasing then of course this direction is the direction in which s increases this one is our s cap all right and uh, in which direction is phi is increasing well phi is increasing you can see it this is how phi is increasing so this tangent to the circle is the direction of increasing phi okay we call this we call this phi cap. A unit vector in this direction uh, is called phi cap. Maybe some better. Okay, 
Spy cap. And similarly, you can do this for Z cap. Z cap does uh, Z direction doesn't change, so we still have uh, the unit vector in Z direction the same as it was in a Cartesian coordinate. You can call this Z cap in this coordinate if you want to. Okay. So now we have specified our unit vectors in S, phi, and Z directions. Now let us look at uh, the transform equations which means if we have x and y and z what will be values of s phi and z so first thing is that z will be equal to z okay z in x cartesian is the same as z in cylindrical coordinate system so this won't change now what about x s this s is same as this one okay you just have projected it along the x y plane yeah, on the xy plane okay and uh, and now it's very very straightforward so this point has the coordinates x y okay this has the point this point has the coordinates x y z this has the coordinates x y 0 okay so it's not uh, in the z direction now this means that if I drop a perpendicular, this length is x and this length is y. Alright, that is what we mean, x, y, 0. And now we can use the Pythagorean, uh, Pythagoras theorem straight away. So we get s is equal to root x square plus y square. Alright, and uh, now we evaluate, so we have found s we need to find phi so tan phi is y by x okay so tan phi is y by x which implies phi is tan inverse y by x so if we have x y z this is how uh, our s phi and z will look like and uh, notice something familiar in the last lecture in the last video this looks something similar to it well if you look from the z-axis from this angle you will see something like this okay and this is exactly the polar coordinates in two dimensions the last uh, the only change was this was replaced by and this was replaced by theta so nothing will change only the notation will change So will the uh, so unit vectors will also not change. So if you looked at my previous video, we saw my previous video. Uh, you will know how to derive these uh, unit vector relations. So s cap is nothing but um, cos theta i cap plus sine theta j cap and. Uh, phi cap will be minus sin theta phi cap is minus sin theta i cap plus cos theta j cap and z uh, z cap is the same as k cap nothing will change so these are our uh, we can call them transformation equations from cylind uh, Cartesian coordinates to centrical coordinates. So that's that's all for today. In the next video, I'll talk about polar coordinates but in three dimensions. Thank you for watching.